And now on to the dinosaur of the day, Oranosaurus, which was a request from Cole via Patreon, so thanks, Cole. The name means brave lizard, and the word Orain is Arabic and means courageous or bold. And some nomads in Niger, where it was found, call local monitor lizards Orain. The type species is Oranosaurus nigeriensis, and the species name refers to Niger, the country where it was found. Paleontologist Philip Tuket named Oranosaurus in 1976, and he found the bones in January of 1965, and the fossils were excavated in 1966. He first used the name in July 1972 at a public presentation of the skeleton, and two specimens have been found, one in 1965 and one in 1972. The holotype is of a nearly complete skeleton and a skull, and it's mounted in the capital of Niger, Niamey, and you can see a cast at the Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle. Taquette's memoir called Dinosaur Impressions, Postcards from a Paleontologist, said that the first Arenosaurus specimen, quote, was placed in the National Museum of Niger, Niamey, inaugurated by the president of the National Assembly of that country, Bobo Hama. A small Niger girl, very timid and cute, with her plated braids dressed like an Aranosaur and silk colored like the Niger flag, and presented the president with a pair of scissors to cut the ribbon across the entry door, end quote. That's an awesome way to open an exhibit. <laughs> it is. So Aranosaurus was an herbivore that lived in the early Cretaceous in what is now Africa, and Taquette said that it weighed about four tons and was 23 feet or seven meters long, but Gregory S. Paul in 2010 said it was probably 2.2 tons and 27 feet or 8.3 meters long. It had a short tail, a short, flexible neck, and it had thumb claws or spikes on each hand and broad hoof-like second and third fingers, which means that it may have been able to walk on them, so it may have been quadrupedal. It had narrow feet with three toes each and pretty short forelimbs, about 55% the length of the hind limbs, and it could also walk bipedally. The femur was longer than the tibia, and where the muscles connected to the base of the tail was weakly developed, so it was probably not a fast runner. The skull was as high as it was wide, and it was about 36 inches or 67 centimeters long, and had a long flat head and a long snout. It had small rounded horns in front of its eyes, and a low bump between the nose and eye on each side of its face, though why it's there is not clear, possibly for mating displays or socialization purposes. It probably spent a lot of time as a quadrupedal for grazing on low-lying plants, and it probably browsed low vegetation. It had a broad beak, somewhat like a duck-billed hadrosaurid, which it used to pull soft, leafy plants from out of the water. Its nostrils were high on the snout, so it was easier to breathe while eating low vegetation. Again, it had a wide beak, but it also had cheek teeth, and it had two sets of teeth, one set for replacement teeth. It probably ate tough plants, as well as fruits and seeds, in addition to the leafy plants, and this is because it could eat tougher plants with its cheek teeth, although probably not too tough because it had weak jaw muscles. It had a large sail on its back with long neural spines, so it looked somewhat like a Spinosaurus, though Spinosaurus and Aranosaurus lived millions of years apart. Its spines were probably covered in skin, and the supporting spines were thick and flat, and the spines at the back were stiff and bound together with ossified tendons, and the tallest spines were over its forelimbs. And these, the tallest spines, were nearly 2 feet or 0.6 meters tall. The spines may have been used for thermal regulation, display, or as some kind of hump with muscle, tissue, or fat like a camel that was used to store energy. It's possible this, the hump would have helped in case of a low rating season, but it's unclear. In 1997, Dr. Jack Bowman Bailey from Western Illinois University said that Aranosaurus spines looked like a modern bison's, but not everyone agrees since it may not have needed to store fat. Bailey's paper was published in the Journal of Paleontology, and it was called From Neural Spine Elongation in Dinosaurs, Sailbacks or Buffalobacks. Hmm. And he wrote that Aranosaurus and Spinosaurus and other long-spine dinosaurs had more bison-like humps than sails because they lived in tropical climates and probably didn't need a sail for thermal regulation, and that humps were probably used to store energy, help shield from heat, help with long-distance migration, and help with conserving energy when nesting or brooding. Yeah, we see that debate a lot, the difference between sails and humps. And even on different dinosaurs, sometimes the prevailing argument will be edging towards one or the other. It's kind of still all over the place. I think that's one of the big mysteries still out there. Yeah. What we do know is that Aranosaurus lived in a river delta, and other dinosaurs included... Lurdosaurus and Nigersaurus, and there were also fish and pterosaurs and sharks. 
A possible predator to it was Suchomimus, which was primarily a fish eater, but also lived near the river delta and could have gone after juvenile Aranosaurus. Another potential threat was Carcharodontosaurus, and also Sarcosuchus, which was a giant crocodile. Originally, Aranosaurus was considered to be part of Iguanodontidae, because it had a similar thumb spike, but now it's considered to be part of the clad Hadrosauroidea as a basal hadrosauroid. And Hadrosauroidea is a clad of dinosaurs that includes the duckbill dinosaurs, hadrosaurids, and dinosaurs more closely related to them than Iguanodon. 